Is that your first meeting? What was your first meeting? I think we're ready. Mine? I think it was somewhere in March or April. Okay, Hello. Jim. Mark. The Design Review Board 1 public meeting of August 13, 2009 is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves during the meeting and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You will be called to present a case or speak on any specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a project must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff to receive names and specific Current Design Review Board agendas are available by calling our Design Review Board hotline at 818-548-3171 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. <coughs> A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and design review board reconsideration and appeal is available at the table by the front door. Please note that all appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of the design review board decision date. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. For roll call, board member Baladian? Here. Board member Garagos is absent. Board member Chairman Malikian? Here. Board member Sakai? Here. And Board Member Zarifian is absent. Report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on August 6, 2009. Oral communications, I have no cards. We don't, we don't have any cards. Which brings us straight to our calendar. There are no staff announcements, nor are there any consent items. So I will turn the meeting over to Chairman Malikian. Okay, so if you're ready. Should go ahead and get started. Okay. Mr. Chair, members of the Design Review Board, the only case tonight is case number 2-PDR-2009-029-B, located at 700 Glenmore. Uh, these are the newly submitted plans along with the proposed plans that were, um, I believe, previously um, given a return for redesign uh, decision. Uh, this is a second time submittal for final review. The board voted uh, return the project for redesign with a 4 nothing vote with seven conditions. Again, the project summary, the project is to propose to add 805 square feet to the first floor and a 715 square foot second floor addition and to change the overall architectural style of the existing residence. The total proposed habitable floor area will be 2,000 80 square feet. This project is exempt from CEQA. At this moment, I will go over the seven conditions that the board had from the previous project. Condition number one was to reduce the massing of the north elevation and provide more articulation for the overall design. Overall massing is simple and blocky. Redesign the second floor to provide greater interest. This is the new elevations that the applicant has submitted. The overall massing of the north elevation has been modified. The second store currently projects one foot from the first floor at the north elevation. New wooden corbels have been added to highlight this feature on the second story. This modest projection helps highlight the second story. A seven foot setback from the front face of the covered patio at the ground floor, meaning that this front um, second story is recessed a total of seven feet from the face of this uh, covered patio. In addition, the new proposed front entry is closer to the street and proposes a different height and roof pitch than the previous submittal. As a result of these modifications, the proposal appears more compatible with the neighborhood. On to condition number two. Provide more accurate details for windows, doors, lighting, railing, roof materials, and finishes. The applicant has fully provided all a cut sheet um, with a window detail of how the installation of the window will, will take place. This, this detail depicts the window having the stucco wrap inward, wrapping inward, rounding the, the window finish. Uh, a sample of of the roof material has also been provided and an actual window sample. Condition number three, clarify and refine the proposed style.
clarify the roof design and revisit the window sizes and proportions on all elevations to provide consistency. Revisit the chimney design, massing, and location. The proposed design has been substantially modified and appears influenced by the Spanish Revival style. The proposed design has been simplified. The new addition is approximately three feet taller than the existing residence. New window sizes have been introduced and com complement the overall style of the residence. Aluminum wood clad windows will be used throughout the residence and two windows on the front elevation will be treated with olive green awnings. The new garage door material will be vinyl and will be, resemble a garage door that, drawing on the east elevation. A new custom wood stained door is proposed and indicated on the material board. The previous chimney design was thin and disproportionate. The new chimney design appears to be well within the appropriate scale and its relationship to the north elevation. Condition number four. Um, Simplify the railing. Do not use pipe rail. As you can see, that condition has been met. A new uh, wrought iron railing has been proposed to satisfy that condition. Condition number five, maintain mature trees on site. As indicated on the landscape plan, the applicant has maintained the existing trees on site and has proposed new landscape as indicated on this landscape plan. Uh, side note, there are two existing oak trees that are within the city's right of way. Uh, Public Works Department has demanded a tree report uh, so that the preservation of those trees is kept during the construction of this project. Condition number six, revisit the front porch and balcony design to make these design elements more usable. The proposed design elements, I'm sorry, the proposed design eliminates the second floor balcony and provides, provides a larger patio. The front patio has increased by approximately 50 square feet projects closer to the street and appears more as usable space. A new lawn area adjacent to the patio also complements the new design. And the seventh and final condition, a new landscape plan has been provided and pictures indicate the proposed foliage. A decorative stamp concrete driveway and patio have been introduced since the previous submittal. The landscape plan does not indicate any treatment to the rear yard and the rear and the rear is proposed to remain largely unchanged. Hedges are proposed along the front property line and along the driveway. Lion's tail will provide accent planting along the front walkway. Those addressed with, with all those comments addressed, staff recommendation is as follows. Staff recommends approval of the project as submitted. That concludes my presentation. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Garo Garapedian. I mean, you submitted a card. Do you have anything? Yes. Uh, I, I, if you can state your name and address, please. Good evening. My name is Karo Garapedian. My address is 15448 Limax Street in Van Nuys, California. And I am uh, the applicant on the project, and I am the designer on the project. And, uh, well, as uh, Gabriel stated on the conditions we had f uh, from previous uh, request for redesign, I think all of the conditions have uh, we worked with, and uh, I think they've been revised to our benefit for a better design overall. Uh, uh, I believe there were some deficiencies last time, which were uh, revised this time, and uh, you you can uh, see from the plans that uh, the points that mentioned are uh, currently uh, have changed and comply with it. Um, the overall project uh, we are focusing on having a more open space towards the front of the house. Uh, so we can utilize the French doors opening from the dining and the living rooms into the front uh, patio area. We are uh, providing a landscape design that will actually give some privacy to that patio area from the street and at the same time uh, being a, a, a very close proximity to the sidewalk, only about uh, roughly about 20 feet away. Um, the 
balconies have been changed um, on the second floor. We were, on the previous design, we had a long balcony, which was uh, basically taking up the entire half of the second floor. Now that's um, has taken out, and we only have a roof that complements uh, different uh, steps of the roof uh, that we, the house has. We've indicated um, and refined the materials that were that will be used on the on the house. Uh, for example, the roof. We have a sample. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on the windows. Now we have a definite um, window design and and the doors have been refined. So overall, I think um, we, I believe we are complying with all the conditions as previously presented. Right. I think we have a better project this time. Yeah. Do you have any questions? I do have a question. Um, are your windows, and I think it's your windows, aluminum with wood cladding or wood with aluminum cladding? And it's are you painting wood, the aluminum? It's wood with aluminum cladding. So you're not painting these? They're no, coming they're pre, kind of they're integral color, like because it says painted aluminum clad, which doesn't make sense. And your window schedule says that they're aluminum with cladding. That's what, well, it's a cladding that's, frame. What, that, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. Well, the cladding is only on the outside to right. provide right. I just wanted to clarify. better protection and the color. And uh, the chip of the color chip that's attached to the window is actually the color. Uh, okay. Uh, we have. Um, We've looked into several companies that make these sort of windows. Uh, the sample we have is from Pella, but um, we would like to have our option to be open to several of the uh, equal companies, so we won't be bound to only using Pella windows. Okay. okay. I have a question on the balcony in the front, um, in front of the master bedroom. Is there a reason why that's just a little 12-inch or however many inches pop out? Well, that's um, actually... Uh, based on the on one of the comments uh, from last uh, presentation that the second floor on the north side actually it looked uh, very very bulky very massive and there wasn't enough break in the in the plane so we decided to step it outside and put the, the wood corbels to uh, to solve that I mean the little balcony above the garage door in front, of, in front of the master oh, bedroom window. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. I, yeah. I was referring to the, to the north side. That's on the front elevation. Front elevation. Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Is there a reason why it's not really a usable balcony? It's just a little. Well, yeah. It's a. It's a. I mean, you can't go out there and put a chair. Not a usable. It's right. not a usable balcony. It's just a wrought iron decorative uh, balcony railing. So there's no reason either way. It's a. a, a it's called a Juliet balcony, and, and it's pretty consistent, I think. Um, you know. How, question, how tall is your front door entrance? The door or the entrance? The entrance door. The entrance door, the entrance door is um, eight, feet. eight feet. Eight feet high. And now uh, the feet. other doors on the front, uh, the, uh, the French doors and the garage doors, they're uh, eight feet high. Actually, actually, the front door is nine foot. I'm yeah. sorry, it's a, a slightly higher. The entrance higher door. The entrance door. The round makes it higher, about a foot or so. To the center, it's nine foot. To the center. It's nine foot. And the color here, you say brown. Uh, it's going to be dark brown, matching the. Yes, it's dark brown, uh, but it's going to be wood. Uh, stained. Stained wood, matching uh, the color of the windows. Okay. Does does the the windows uh, have surround? Are you proposing any panels around the windows, or, or are you going to no, just leave it down? No, actually, the detail we are proposing is the stucco will have a, a round end instead of um, any moldings. It will just uh, well, you can refer to the detail I have. Um, it will be about uh, an inch recessed into the wall. Okay. The, the depth of the stucco. And in the front elevation, you have the three small windows. Is there a reason why there are small windows? They're the little square windows? Well, the uh, reason for that is, uh, first of all, if you look at the window right above the entry, mm -hmm. that's lining up with the, the front door, entry door. Do you want to be consistent? falls into that two-story high space. 
and um, the two windows next to the uh, in the master one in the master bedroom and one in the bathroom actually mm -hmm. uh, there is interior wise there is not enough space to put a bigger window but structurally we would need to have uh, the shear walls we, we have on the second floor to maintain that. so you can't make them larger because of shear wall well several reasons shear wall and um, the space inside from outside it looks like we have a wall but from inside it will be uh, very tight in the master Looking bedroom. Up. Right. And then um, the lower floor, you have the double doors with the two windows. Is there a reason why that they're in the center of the two rooms? It's like it's the living room and the dining room. It's sort of like not really in this where the wall would continue, but it's sort of centered on the elevation versus in well, the interior. After analyzing the, the, the room sizes, we decided that it will be to our advantage to to make the dining room and living room into uh, one larger room instead of dividing them. This way we can have the access to the outside from both rooms. And then what is the material for the paving on the outside um, patio and the entrance? For the paving we have a stamped concrete and I have a, a picture of that. So I think that's shown on your landscape plan, uh, the hatch pattern? Yes. But that's yes. not shown uh, underneath the cupboard area. Is it the same paving that continues all the way through? Well, uh, it, it won't have the, the, uh, the diagonal uh, pattern. It will have a smooth pattern. So it will be the same color, but same, just same color, yes. smooth. Any more questions? One more question. I'm having, um, I need to clarify. The front entrance door, how wide is it total? Five feet or six feet? It's a six feet. Each, six feet? Each leaf is uh, three feet. Three feet, wide. okay. So like, hmm. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Close the public session. Um, the last meeting that we had, I, I just want to bring it up, guys, that um, I met with the applicant, with, with staff, we went through the plans, and some would clarify some of the concerns and conditions that we had. We talked about a lot of the details. So from what I'm seeing, uh, they, they completely addressed you know, my concerns that we talked about, and we looked at some solutions, but I think, so I just wanted to bring that up, that I did meet with them, um, closed doors, uh, without the public being present with the staff. So, you can go ahead. Okay. Um, great improvements, and uh, I think you covered ba all the bases. We talked about it last time. Um, I'm happy with the new design um, but I want to make sure a few things that you will follow through and keep the finishes and no substitutions um, make sure that the planning department has all the finishes like this is great I like it uh, Pella or Sierra Pacific or any other brand but as an equal quality not uh, any other style design um, I have no problem. Uh, make sure that uh, the roof tiles, uh, that's the sample, I believe. And, um, and then make sure, uh, I want to make sure that uh, the front entrance door, uh, it's dark brown stain, not light brown, or change the color at the last minute. So what I'm saying, I like the design. I have no problem with it. Uh, but just make sure all the materials, the quality are followed through properly and uh, one suggestion is uh, make sure uh, that's the final color you you like on the stucco beige color uh, maybe you should come up with a couple of additional samples before you do the whole entire house maybe a lighter beige like you have it in the sample here uh, just as a suggestion, maybe test it, a couple of tryouts, and then forward and decide which color do you want. Um, I have no, that's it, I don't have any problem. Good job. Thanks. Okay. Well, I like the project a lot. I think it's a great improvement over what you currently have on the site. I was really excited to review the package. Um, it's also a nice, nicely put together package. So I had a, um, 
I spent a lot of time on it because I was just so excited to to look through every little element of it. And I, in doing so, you know, you pick up more things the more you look at something. So there's a couple of inconsistencies. That's why I had the question about the windows because the schedule versus the detail um, were a little confusing and under, uh, hard to understand. Um, so I'm just going to go through and kind of address some of the concerns that I had that I thought personally could have maybe be pushed a little further. Um, there are more recommendations or considerations than they are um, uh, conditions. Um, I think, first of all, it would be nice if you uh, coordinated the second floor window schedule with the actual windows so I could tell which one was going where. <laughs> I think that might have been a, a last minute change. Um, on the front elevation, I think this looks great. Uh, I'd like to see, though, the for me, the balcony, it seemed like it should be bigger. It just had, needed to have a little more presence to it and that the, it should be longer and deeper. Um, and if, if it's a usable balcony, I think that that would bring another element to the facade, that you'd have this another, another piece of material on the front of the building and you can actually use it. I think that would be better, beneficial to the building. Um, I also liked the old design with the lower floor where you broke it up into two bays where you had the arch archways, and I know you can't put the arches where they are there because of the roof that you've installed now, uh, you've designed now, but I think that maybe having the doors, have a double pair of doors in each of the rooms so that you have two pairs of double doors and you have one in each living room and dining room so that it becomes like a separate room even though it's one big space. And then that also gives you the benefit of having the same four panes of glass um, and be able to break up the opening into two bays, maybe even bring the arches back if you can fit it in underneath the, uh, the, the beams for the, for the patio roof. So that would be um, below. And then I think in the second bedroom, um, the windows, to me that the small square window wants to be the same size as the double windows. Um, it could be a single window, but if it was the same length and uh, width of the other double pair, that it would be more about a window assembly than about these little square windows that go along the front that don't quite make much sense uh, in terms of having a presence. And uh, if that were the case, then to do the awnings maybe even wider to uh, encompass both the single and the double swing windows. I also think that the um, the drawing is shown incorrectly. If these are casement windows, uh, they would be the same swing pattern as a double window instead of being a, like a hopper swing uh, window drawn that you have currently. Um, I think on the north elevation, this is probably the best improvement of the, of the old drawing to the new drawing. I, I really like the way it looks. Um, and here I think, you know, you have the, div the divisions of the muttons on the kitchen window where we have uh, one, two, three, four, nine, nine uh, panels of glass. If that was continued into the second floor bedroom window to make it, make it more consistent because there are double swing windows uh, to make all the windows the same size of glass, it's closer to the same size of glass. Um, and then moving on to the rear elevation where you have the study window, which looks like it's longer, um, it's a little bit longer of a window, which is a lower sill height. I think that would also be nice to use that window in the living room space because then it gives it that more of an old world feeling that the building used to be, how they used to make windows back in the day. And if that doesn't match the kitchen window, that's fine because you know, the kitchen usually has countertops and such surfaces. Living rooms are more freestanding furniture spaces. So I board, board member Sakai, excuse me, I've uh, lost. You've lost me. Lost track on, <laughs> on the, uh, the. You said raise the sill height of which window on lower which the other? sill height lower on the, the north sill. elevation to match the sill height on the study in the rear elevation. I see. Um, I see. I see. Okay. Which the rear elevation, the sill heights are consistent. I think that'd be nice just to take that sill height and move it. And continue it Reflect to the north, that on the north elevation. On the north elevation. And that will make the north elevation sill heights not match each other. But I think that, you know, that's that's perfectly fine. Um, is that all my comments on the windows? Let's see. I think you also should show the, sh the, show the chimney on the second floor plan, uh, just to show that it's there. And you may consider adding a window in that um, front bathroom to balance out the windows and also add, add more light into that room. Um, I don't know what your 
privacy and visibility is into your neighboring uh, property. So that might be consideration. Um, these are considerations. These are all considerations. Yeah. I mean, overall, I think that the drawing, the project is pretty nicely thought through, and I like Spanish architecture, Spanish Revival architecture. So, you know, the, and the way and the improvements you've made over the previous and middle are fantastic, and I think you've you've taken it, you've taken it to the next level, and I mean, these can kind of just get you there to the next level of making it a really nice. Uh, nice residence that looks like it's been there for a long time. It hasn't been, it's not a new building. That this is constructed in the 1920s and actually made Spanish Revival style buildings. Um, uh, I know about the landscaping. I think uh, it's a very clear plan. I think that you want to probably get a professional landscape designer uh, to do your plans. Um, so you can consider things like erosion. You're on a slight, you're in a hillside area. All the drainage from the backyard is going to be coming down the side uh, into the front or hopefully into drains. You know, you're going to have to consider all that. Um, in hillsides, you know, you don't want this hill to fail behind you and, or to have all that runoff coming down to the front. Um, I know we have water considerations and restrictions going on in Glendale right now. I recommend not using turf, as you're showing, on the front landscaping. Um, and instead, do some kind of like low grasses. Um, fescue, for instance, is a low grass. It's clumping grass, but it it's, looks like grass. Uh, Ameria is a grass. Uh, or just go with ground covers. You know, they're, they're low, they stay green. Do something like that. And um, where you have the hedges in front, I would recommend putting the hedges closer to the pathway instead of flip, flipping it around. I mean, I don't, it, you're, you have a little bit of a raised um, off the sidewalk. So putting the hedges there makes it even higher. And someone walking past your house, it won't feel as inviting to have it sort of gradually stepping up towards the house with the landscaping instead of having this wall of hedges that are right there. Unless you plan for housing a small row of hedges, which of course this doesn't really um, delineate what size or you know, how tall they're going to get or what kind of material this is. So I think if you can just consider you know, all these things about the person walking on the sidewalk, how they perceive your house, how does it look from the street, and, and how do you want to use the patio and the privacy from the front. Um, to kind of screen that off. Um, and then also I would say that um, I think in your, one of your plans you show the paving continuing from the driveway over to the entry porch. I think that's on your first floor plan. So the first floor plan, which doesn't show landscaping, just shows a line. Uh, you probably will end up needing some way to walk from the driveway to the porch. And I recommend just filling in that um, proposed grassy area or planted area um, with paving and then continuing your planting down below. And then on the right-hand side or the south end side where you have proposed the hedges, um, you know, right now I see you have tall, tall plant material there. I think a tall hedge uh, is the way to go and probably, like you're showing, just do one plant material whether it be a tall hedge or low trees. Um, I think you can get away with either one of those, and you can do that with drought-tolerant plantings. Um, the other question I have is on the north property line, there really is no room for planting. And I'm sorry, I, I couldn't really figure out where the delineation between your, the, prop, the neighbors and this property's foliage ended. So when you take all this stuff out to build this project, if there's no foliage there, I'd, you know, I'd like to see that some gets put back in, but there's no room as is currently proposed because there's about, I'm going to guess, six inches of space where you can put a plant. Um, I don't know if, if we can take this back, uh, um, the land, the paving back to where the stairs end, and then at least you have some space there to put some narrow hedges or some trees. I think that also would be, clear, would be, a, did be determined by the, the tree report that the city is going to be doing, the forestry service is going to be doing, because if they determine that certain plants have to stay, yes. that you're going to have to relook at this, the north side of the property um, beyond the property line. And then I also just would, would suggest um, considering where your trash cans are going to go because from where I can tell there really is no place. And once you, put, once you start putting your trash cans out in front, you know, if they're not, if there's not, not a good place to put them, it can be kind of unsightly in the neighborhood. I wouldn't appreciate that. So consider things, things okay. like that. Trash. I think that's... 
that's all I have. Well, um, first of all, it's an amazing improvement. I think I think just day and night difference, and I appreciate you taking all the um, recommendations and and uh, and items that we brought forward and, and we met. And I know it was kind of frustrating to come to this point and not get it approved in time, but. I think, um, I think overall you've addressed all the con um, issues that we had originally, and, and a lot of these items that um, and uh, was mentioned right now in regards to the balcony, it was they addressed our issues. So we actually told them to reduce it because of the co uh, the competing mass that he had with the front entry block. So we wanted to reduce that to kind of play that along. It is a Julia balcony, and it works as a light element there over whereas the the massing of that entrance I think it plays great the way it is now if, if it enlarges that I think then you got you start having this mass competing with the front entry mass that he's he's he's, he's proposing over there so um, I think that, that was one of the things and he addressed it so so um, and also so we did talk about taking those two arches that he has over there and eliminating that arch is like exactly the the stuff we talked about to kind of create a one giant opening and I think that was um, whose condition was that I'm not sure um, yeah he was sitting here um, I, I think it was uh, Alex was it Mr. Carter's yeah I think it was Mr. Carter so but anyways uh, and overall I think it's a it's a great improvement I think uh, one way or another, it's been addressed. I, I think switching it to to more of a Spanish flavor, I think it's been a um, great move. Um, so, so I don't have any issues with this. Um, so, if you guys want to go ahead and make a motion, I'll be. Um, we can. We'll, we'll break a record. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the. Case 2PDR 2009-029B. Actually, can I have, uh, is the uh, tree report, a con is that going to be part of the, the uh, submittal? It's, 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 it's yes, the applicant has already provided the tree report and has been reviewed by Public okay. Works. Then I second the motion. With, Mr. Bellotti, would that be with, with as submitted or with conditions or with? Did you put any? I didn't put any I mean, condition. I mean, it was co mostly Roll. consideration. Okay, yeah, so as, as, submitted. As, submitted. as submitted. As submitted. Okay, this will be roll call. Mr. Bellotian? Yes. Ms. Sakai? Yes. Mr. Malekian? Yes. Motion carries 3 nothing. Yes. Congratulations. Um, okay, so the minutes. Yes, those will be the minutes of July the 16th. All board members were present. Had a chance to review that? Um. Yeah, I think I had a... I think I... Where was this? <laughs> <laughs> Item number three on Verdugo Boulevard. Maintain the existing palm trees as a condition. Uh, Sorry, which page is that on page number on three? On page five. Or item number three? Item number three on page five. Item number three on page five. Okay, and... There's a condition to number eight, maintain the existing palm trees. That's really a consideration. You know, I'm sorry. The minutes that I have in front of me are incorrect. Oh, okay. July 6th. Yes. So which condition? I'm sorry. Uh, condition number eight. Condition number eight, maintain the existing palm trees. Consideration. Is it consideration? <clears throat> we'll review the tapes and make sure that... I, I don't know. <laughs> Pardon? Right. I, Okay, why don't we do that and make that, should I just move that as under consideration and then just sign it, or do we want to make that change and then bring it back next time? However the board wishes. I mean, if you feel confident in staff reviewing the minutes. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll mark it and I'll sign it. Yeah. Yeah. Reviewing the so I may have said, I may have said a condition. Did you but mean? I meant a consideration. You meant consideration? Okay. Why don't we do this? We'll have the case planner... Um, and that was Jale review the tape. Okay. And make a then so why don't we could just go ahead and carry okay. these minutes over for an additional okay. week. So then on the twenty second minutes. And the minutes of the twenty second. 
I mean, I'm sorry, second. Sorry. July the second. Those sorry. were actually changes were made per Chairman Malikian's request, and the conditions have been addressed and rewritten okay. to reflect what was said. So I've signed just, it, but I need, need a motion. Correct. <laughs> I believe I you already. To, I think we uh, did. You, you actually approved okay. it, so we just wanted right. to make sure that. So you it's signed. I'll leave the tw 16th in here, and then you guys make the changes and bring it back next time. Okay. We'll That's it. That. All right. We're adjourned.